Hey everybody, the Super Vader 400 back for another video, and this time, as you can see, I, I, as you can see, um, this is my, um, X-Men Memories videos. As you can already see, I'm not in front of the camera. Like I said, when I do this series, this is when I'm on the bed. You can't see me on the bed. I'm just going to talk a little bit about a certain topic and give my memories on that said topic and this is my X-Men memories video. I'm going to give you my memories with the X-Men franchise before I start. The X-Men franchise is one of my favorite comic books and franchises in the Marvel um, universe. Universe. I first got into X-Men in the early 90s with the 1989 pilot, The Pride of X-Men, and of course, the revolutionary X-Men, the animated series, which changed the way Saturday cart changed the way Saturday cartoons were made, introducing long long complex story arcs, something that was unheard of in Saturday morning cartoons at the time, but seen all the time in um, anime, anime, um, like I said, and ever since seeing this cartoon, I've been a huge fan of X-Men, I got into the comic books in my, um, I got into the comic books in my early teens, and I saw the first X-Men movie when I was about 11. I saw the first X-Men movie when I was about 10 or 11, and I got into the comic books in my early teens when I was about 12 or 13, or 13, and, um, and ever since then, I've been a huge fan of the X-Men for its large and colorful cast of characters with different costumes and different, um, superpowers. Then, when, when I first got into X-Men, it was the large and colorful cast of characters, the costumes, and the different superpowers. When I got um, older and started to understand the story more, I began to appreciate it for its complex storylines featuring cultural diversity, racism, politics, and prejudice, prejudice and civil rights stuff, stuff that, that we faced in um, real life in the, um, in the relatable, um, in the realistic, relatable um, characters. Once again, that's what caused Marvel to become more popular than DC in the first place, was introducing realism and naturalism to this comic, to, to these comic book um, universes, universes, and it was X-Men's Magneto and the Fantastic Four's Doctor Doom that redefined the villain, the bad guy, for me, for me, um, for me, every bad guy prior to these characters, or even some after these characters, were either a, were either a cliche mad scientist, a thug, a thug, or a, um, or just a stereotypical, um, a crazy clown like Joker, or just a stereotypical gimmick bad guy, you had characters like Magneto and Doctor Doom that, um, my opinion redefined the bad guys. You had characters like Red Skull, uh, Lex Luthor, Juggernaut, um, and the various Spider-Man villains who were just either thugs or just criminal geniuses or just pure evil. But you had characters like Magneto and Doctor Doom who redefined um the villain, who redefined the villain with Magneto being a Holocaust, with Magneto being a Holocaust um survivor, and and of course, Doctor Doom being hated, being on um in the United States, Doctor Doom is is considered is is um hated and, and is a um is a terrorist and an enemy in his own country of Latveria. He is revered and he is a hero, and characters like the Fantastic Four are the outsiders. But I'll talk more about Doom in a Fantastic Four video or in the one of the next videos I'm going to do like this, the Marvel Memories video, I'll talk more about Dr. Doom, but um, Magneto being a Holocaust survivor, Magneto being a Holocaust survivor, and um, just um, 
Professor X and um, Magneto. I don't think this was the intention when they were when they were writing this, but Professor X and Magneto would best represent um, the real life Malcolm X and the real life um, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King um, respectfully. Whereas um, whereas Magneto, because of the prejudice he suffered at the hands of humans, Magneto was militant, militant militant and in fear that humans and mutants could never coexist could never coexist professor x was more like martin luther king where he wanted mutants and humans to coexist and live peacefully live peacefully together and these two guys ideologies cl- um, clash together then i like how you have extremely powerful characters like mr sinister and apocalypse characters who are so powerful that they cause the x-men and the brotherhood of mutants magneto's team magneto's team of um um characters to occasionally um team up team up seen with them other threats like the sentinels the sentinels so um so um yeah these things being a huge fan of X-Men, then let's let's talk about the awesome characters. Um the awesome um, characters first you had the original X Men series in the nineteen sixties which feature Jean Grey Marvel Girl, Cyclops the Leader, Beast, Iceman, and Angel, of course, Angel of course, who were and led by Professor X. These were the original X Men. These guys were um, teenagers, and I wa- just recently watched a documentary from Comic Book Girl nineteen one nineteen, and she said um, the early X Men series were mostly superhero villain of the week stories, but later they would um, they would um, dive into something deeper, take t- tackling civil rights, racism, prejudice prejudice and cultural um diversity in later um issues they were briefly canceled they were briefly canceled and brought back in 1975 brought back in 1970 an issue called the giant size x-men with a whole new team who would recruiting characters wolverine who actually made his first appearance attack on uh, attacking the incredible hulk um um an asian mutant named sun Named a Japanese Asian mutant named I think Sunflower and another um, Indian mutant named um, Thunderbird, Colossus, Colossus, a mutant from the Soviet Union, and um, um, and of course um, Nightcrawler, a mutant from the United Kingdom. All these characters would um, join um, the X Men. Then of course you later had Kitty Pryde. You later had Kitty Pryde, Shadowcat joined on um, the X Men. Jean Grey would leave the X Men, then eventually come back, then eventually leave. Then also would later become on um, the Phoenix. So, like, so many awesome storylines. Like, you had another cool storyline called Days of Future Past, where Kitty, where Kitty Pryde, Shadowcat travels back in the past to prevent, um, to prevent the Sentinels from eliminating all um mutants and um and um and um so many um other so you know um you know you had characters like that then of course um you had also you had a canadian team called the alpha the alpha flight a, ca- a cool canadian team then of course 90s you got the time traveling mutant bishop then you got um gambit then you got gambit and um um, Angel would later become Archangel when he would become a full horseman for uh, the, the, um, the Egyptian mutant Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Bad guys. You had, you had Juggernaut, the stepbrother of um, Professor X, who became a human, human Juggernaut after reciting a, after meeting with a, um, I think Cytac, I think that's his name, and reciting the stone and becoming a literally a human Juggernaut. And the unique thing about him is that Juggernaut's just a big, strong guy. In the original comics, he's a big, strong guy. He isn't a mutant. Um, then you got Sabretooth. You got um, Sabretooth, who, is, um, who has a long-standing rivalry with Wolverine. Wolverine, who has powers and a, similar to Wolverine, and a rivalry with him. 
Then of course you got um two two um Avalanche Pyro Pyro the Blob the Blob and um Quicksilver and Wanda Magneto's children um um so um, um like I said so many um so many awesome characters another cool bad guy Eric the Red um a guy in a devilish costume um um so so many cool characters and like i said the the awesome x-men the animated series started all from started it all for me um like i said i saw both the pride of x-men which was really awesome this had the 80s line wolverine with the red and orange cyclops with what i like to call the captain america look where he had the um he had an outfit similar to Captain America. He had um he had it he had his hair covered. He had his hair covered, had like a hoodie, had like a hood mask on, had like a hood mask on, uh, and a um and um um or um yellow um yellow um speedos over his blue tights and of course yellow boots similar to Captain America. Captain America um Colossus, who who was a mainstay of the X Men comics up until the nineties, uh, was featured in this pilot. Was featured in this pilot. Um, the the entire pilot was to stop, I think, an asteroid from created by Magneto from um, hitting Earth, hitting um, Earth. This pilot featured Kitty Pride joining the team, and also featured Wolverine, a Canadian with an Australian um, accent. This was an awesome pilot, and half of me wishes, as much as I love the 90s version, half of me wishes they would have continued the series. I would love to see more storylines with this lineup in this era of uh, X-Men, with X-Men. And then, of course, you had, um, then, of course, the same team would come back in the 90s and redid, redid it as the revolutionary X-Men um, series, X-Men series. I, I, I enjoyed the entire series. I thought season one, the first couple of episodes of season two, and the entire season three, which tackled the, the Phoenix and Dark Phoenix sagas, were the best arcs of the entire series. And they, and the first season tackled um, several um, specific arcs, several po several popular arcs, such as um, 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 Night of the Living Sentinels, which feature which feature an original character created for the show more of who gets killed in battle, but is later, but is later revived by the Sentinel to terrorize the um, X Men, to terrorize the X Men in, in um, retaliation for abandoning him. Then of course, um, then of course, um, you got the unstoppable Juggernaut. You got the first appearance of him, which also featured the first appearance of Colossus. Then of course, you got. Um, 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 the Slave Islands, the episode where Storm goes to the sewers and fights the Morlocks for elite control, the leader of the Morlocks, which I think actually happens in the comics, but she gives the leadership back to the original Morlock leader. Um, um, uh, oh yes, and then of course, the popular Cure storyline, which featured the first appearance of Angel and Apocalypse with um, Rogue seeking um help from a doctor to um cure her um, mutations this is where they first encounter apocalypse who um who who recruits who um tricks angel into giving him a mutation but the mutation is actually to turn him into a slave of apocalypse and he becomes archangel 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 the x-men and x-men and magneto team up to battle um apocalypse who makes several appearances throughout the show then of course you have the Days of Future Past, the Days of Future Past storyline feature here, except they did it differently. They, they instead of Shadow Cat Kitty Pride traveling back into time, it featured Bishop traveling back into time to prevent to pre and they combined it with another storyline where Bishop tries to prevent the assassination of John F. Kennedy, where one of the X-Men is a traitor, but one of the X-Men is a traitor. So like I said, they did so many cool things. Then the first couple of episodes of uh, season two, where which we featured the return of more who wanted revenge on the X Men for abandoning him, for abandoning him. This entire arc was emotional. Was emotional. I love the uh, Morph character. 
Then, of course, um, season three with the Phoenix and Dark Phoenix and featured appearances from Eric the Red, a super a Superman Mohawk look 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 alike named um, named Gladiator who tossed who tossed and defeated um Juggernaut with um, ease defeated Juggernaut with ease. But like I said, um, also the Alpha Flight, the Canadian team were featured in the show. So is um Captain America and the um fighting animations got much better in the later seasons because they had Kalia do it and like I said this was just an awesome um, series and lasted a long time lasted 72 episodes lasting 72 episodes much longer than what what an animated series was supposed to last back in those um, days back in those days and actually the show I think ended because of budget issues despite how popular it was it ended because of budget issues but like I said the uh, this this cartoon started off for me then in the 2000s. X Men Evolution on Kids WB and later Cartoon Network. Later Cartoon Network. Um, I recently finished the series. I recently finished the series three years ago and wa and just recently watched it again for this video and several more videos featuring the X Men and um, series was awesome. Not only did it have better animation than the previous um, X Men series. But it had um, more. It, it had more. It had more action. More fluid action. Um, more fluid action. Um, a cool, cool anime style artwork. Cool, a redesigned anime style artwork. And while being a reimagining of the X Men franchise, this series remained remained true to still, in some ways, remained true to what the X Men was about and captured the spirit of what it was about. And, this series and the previous two series were way better than the uh, live action movies, which I'm about to talk about. Live action uh, movies I'm talking about. I love how this series reimagined every character as teenagers and characters like Storm and Wolverine as younger characters and mentors to characters like Jean and um, and um, Cyclops. The only thing I didn't like about this series was Jubilee wasn't featured much in this jubilee wasn't featured much in the series i also like how this series reimagined the brotherhood in this series the brotherhood they're called the brotherhood and they're antagonists to x-men for like for like the first couple of seasons but team up with them mul multiple times including in the final battle with apocalypse but the brotherhood here were made more sympathetic they were just the brotherhood of mutants they weren't the brotherhood of evil mutants and Magneto wasn't the controller of them. He left Mystique in charge of them while Magneto controlled another team consisting of himself, Mastermind, I think Mesmero, Mesmero one of them, um, um, Colossus, and Gambit, and Pyro as the, um, as the Acolytes. But he left Mystique in charge of the Brotherhood, which consisted of Avalanche, Avalanche, um, Avalanche, Quicksilver, Wanda, um, Toad and uh, Blob and and Toad and Blob and I like how um, the the Brotherhood Avalanche who in the comic books is a terrorist here he was um, he was more of a rebel and a misguided grungy teenager grungy teenager Toad was back to being a more sympathetic character I think he's always been a sympathetic character uh, Toad I love um, his personality in this um um version of Quicksilver was awesome here um so was Wanda and, uh, and Blob Blob while be, while redesigned to be younger was to totally true to his comic book counterpart comic book um, counterpart and um um what's his name um Magneto was more was Magneto um Magneto love what he did with his character in this series, love what he did with his character in this series, and um, and um, yeah, this was much better. Let's say this was an awesome series. The first series, the first season was an introductory arc, introducing you to the core characters, the core X Men and characters like Nightcrawler, Rogue, Nightcrawler, Rogue, um, um, characters who would later join the X Men. And then, of course, introducing us to characters like Blob, Lance, and um, Toad, and Quicksilver, and Wanda. And, of course, a character created for the show, Spike, 
here to finish this fight. Then, of course, um, season two. Season two focused more on the supporting heroes. I didn't like season two as much. A lot of people consider season two to be an improvement over season one. I like season one and season three the best. Where in season three, um, the mutants are no longer kept a secret. Are no longer kept a secret. Everybody knows they're mutants, and life becomes even harder for the x-men so the x-men have to not only um prove to themselves that not all prove to the humans that not all mutants are bad but deal with other threats like juggernaut and um characters um characters um like that and also professor x goes missing professor x goes missing but they narrowly find him after mystique i think um when a after she absorbs juggernaut's powers discovers where professor x is then of course you got um the final episodes the final episodes which there was one episode where, where the brotherhood were heroes that decide to um cause problems in order to um save the day so save the day um where they intentionally cause problems and disasters so they can save the day and collect the rewards the rewards but the, the final episodes dealt with um apocalypse and had this huge epic battle where the x-men the brotherhood where the X Men and the Brotherhood um, um, were in this all out battle with Apocalypse and his chosen four horsemen, which consisted of Storm, Professor X, and uh, Magneto, and Magneto, and I keep forgetting who the other one was, but um, oh yeah, Mystique, and Mystique, and Mystique, and um, Mystique, and um, they were nearly defeated, and Apocalypse was seen the way in, and Professor X had a glimpse of the future where where um with an all new team of x-men and the brotherhood becoming members of shield and it would have been cool to see like a sequel series featuring professor rex's vision but the series um ended there the same team would later come back in 2008 or 9 i don't remember which exact year to create a new series called wolverine and the x-men based on the astonishing x-men comic book series one of the many spin-off x-men comic book series yeah before i continue with wolverine and x-men there were a bunch of spin-offs there was my favorite my favorite series in the series i read them i'm most familiar with and read the most there was the x the official x-men or uncanny x-men series is what i like to call it then of course there was um um spin-off titles like first class which featured which featured the original 1960s team of X-Men, X-Men with yellow and black costumes. Um, there is um, Excalibur, a um, a team Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler leads in um, United Kingdom. There was also, I think, a, a, a New Mutants team that I remember a Juggernaut being a part of and Colossus being a part of too. So, um, yeah, there was um there was these spin-off titles and that's what the war of uh, the movie was movie the x-men was based on the astonishing x-men comics love this um cartoon this cartoon was like a mashup of x-men evolution in the original x-men animated series but plot wise it wasn't as good as um the original the original um three x-men series however i did like um like I said, however, I did like um, the animation. I feel this series would have been better and it would have lasted longer if it would have been featured on Cartoon Network instead of Nicktoons. But um, this was an awesome series. I saw a couple of episodes of this on Disney XD and I've watched a couple of episodes on um, YouTube. I've never, I haven't fully watched the series all the way through. Then, of course, there was a Anime X-Men, which... Anime X-Men. I love this series. I love this series as much, but I prefer watching the other three because they're much faster. This The, the X-Men anime series is more like a movie, so it moves slower, but I love the anime style animation, the anime style animation and the complex um, storylines, complex storylines. I, I haven't fully watched that all the way through. I get, gotta fully watch that all the way through and review that in the future sometimes. Then of course now for the X-Men films. I love the original three X-Men films and the most recent X-Men Apocalypse. X-Men Apocalypse. X-Men Wolverine Origins. I liked that film when it first came out. Now, after seeing better comic book films, yeah, I don't like that film as much, but I still enjoy watching it. There were several cool scenes in that film, and I love the cast in that film. 
X Men First Class I absolutely can't stand. That one did not follow the comics, but it was just bore. It was mostly boring and just not really that good of a superhero film. X Men Days of Future Past I didn't like this one either, but most of my hate has kind of gone down for this one. I like um the beginning and the end were in my opinion the best parts of this film then of course x-men apocalypse which is in my opinion not a good film but this was this was the x-men film i wanted this was a good reimagining of the x-men um uh, franchise and i love the team featured in this film and the final battle with the x-men apocalypse was worth um the price of admission and sitting through the film and all its um problems such as the biggest problem the movie had was pacing was a uh, pacing um, like I said, um, um, the first three X-Men films, back when I saw them in the 2000s, I thought they were the greatest things ever, greatest things ever. Now, they're still awesome, however, they're not the masterpieces I remember to be. They're inaccurate with the comic books, and they nerfed and ruined several, um, they nerfed or ruined several characters. It's ruined, um, several characters. We got Wolverine Origins, which I liked when it first came out. Now, uh, it's not it's not all that good. I love the action and the cast and um and um the first and last scene of that film was the best. The beginning scene was struck with Wolverine, Deadpool, Blob, Agent Zero, Agent Zero, Strike, and and then Wraith and the rest of the team, Saber Tooth and the rest of the team led by Striker taking out that military was awesome. Then the final scene with with um, Wolverine and Deadpool, Wolverine and Wolverine, Wolverine and Saber Two teamed up to fight um, Deadpool, teaming up to fight Deadpool. Um, so still an exciting film. The film suffers from a weak script, a weak script, um, poor special effects, poor special effects, and lots of other inconsistencies, lots of inconsistencies. But this was much better than that X Men. First class, um, X Men first class garbage that will come later. This film right here was terrible. First off, not only was this not based on the X Men the first class comic books, but it featured a lot of uh, characters who were not X Men first class. It featured a lot of characters like Darwin and them who were not X Men first class. And it had Emma Frost as a bad guy, the villain portrayed by Kevin Sebastian Shaw, portrayed by Kevin Bacon was um terrible it had plot holes and inconsistencies with the um with the original x-men films with the original x-men films and um film was just terrible the second film x-men days of future past this was better than the previous film but i didn't like this film either however like i said um my hatred for this film has recently softened um the beginning scene with the mutants in the future are still are fighting the sentinels in the final scene where where with Magneto controlling the sentinels and um, Wolverine um Wolverine erasing the previous films from the timeline and starting everything anew starting everything new were the best were the best scenes in the film but the middle part of the film where Wolverine went back in time they made that painfully boring painfully boring then of course you got um Then of course the last scene, the last um, then of course um, then of course before but before X Men Days of Future Past, I often forget this film, but we had another Wolverine film, and this film right here, this film was cut, this film was crap, and it was so bad I don't even remember it. The first problem I had with this film was um, they screwed up uh, they screwed up the mutant character Silver Samurai. How do you screw up a character like Silver Samurai? You can't find an Asian man and put him in s Silver Samurai armor? Silver Samurai armor? No, they had him in a mechanized transformer, like, robot suit. Robot suit. This film was just, not only was it not that good, it was an average generic action film, and it's just not memorable. It's just not memorable. It's real terribly forgettable. Then, of course, you had, um, then, of course, you had, um, um, X Men Apocalypse. Oh, well, before that, you had a Deadpool film, which is in this universe. Deadpool. I had high hopes for this film, but I didn't like this film. I, 
on the de dead like um Ryan Reynolds as um Deadpool, um uh, uh, biggest um um and the inclusion of um Colossus and biggest teenage Sonic Warhead in this film did, but this film first off didn't follow the comics, even though they were for mo most part true to the Deadpool character portion of the comics. They didn't follow the comics. The budget for the film was too small. If you've even seen the Deadpool comics, you will know that you need a huge um, budget. This film had a lot of um, terrible, unfunny jokes. Actually, that's the biggest problem was it was a superhero comedy film that just really wasn't funny. It just really wasn't funny, but um, but um, but um, the action stuff is good in the dead in the Deadpool's interaction with Colossus and um. Teenage Sonic Warhead was good, so the parts of the comedy they did right were good, but um, but the jokes and the inaccuracies with the comics make this made this a disappointing superhero um film. However, I am looking forward to the sequel because they plan to bring Cable into the franchise. Um, um, next was X Men Apocalypse. This really wasn't a good film, but I love this film. I love the team they had. They had a team consisting of Cyclops. Professor X, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Jean Grey, um, ha um, Havoc, Havoc, um, Havoc, Quicksilver, and finally at the end, oh yeah, Beast, and finally at the end, um, Storm. Wolverine also made a cameo in this film. Made a cameo in this film also, um, they finally got Apocalypse in the film. I've been waiting for Apocalypse in an X Men film for like ever. Even though, if, even though they tell you the truth, they didn't do him justice. They didn't do him justice, and they also didn't do Angel, Cyclops, and Jubilee Justice, who also appeared in this film. I also love the inclusion, and um, I also love the inclusion of um, I mentioned Storm. So um, yeah, this was the uh, X. This was a good reimagining of the X Men uh, franchise. The the um the story. The story, characters, the special effects and action carry this film. The terrible part, the bad, the the flaws of the films are the script. The the, the script. There are a bunch of plot holes in the script. Um. They didn't do characters, Magneto, I mean, they didn't do characters, um, Apocalypse, Angel, Cyclops, and Jubilee Justice. I didn't even know Jubilee was in the film, so I watched it for the second and third times. And, of course, they didn't, um, and, of course, um, and, of course, terrible pacing issues and weak cast. The cast from the original X-Men trilogy was much better, but, um, but um, if they make more X Men films with this cast and like this, I'll watch more um X Men um, films. I'm looking forward to the follow up films to this. However, I do not like the fact that they have Channing Tatum playing Gambit in an X Men film. But like I said, this was um this was um my X Men memories video. My Marvel video is coming up next. All right, I'm done.